Hi, I'm Scott Novus, and I'm going to walk you through uh, basically how I use uh, Obsidian as my personal knowledge management system and how I integrate ChatGPT with that. That's been a topic of a lot of interest in our AI chat group, um, and this is targeted at a business owner, EO, executive audience. Basically, people just like me. Uh, I think you're busy and battling the overwhelm and um, we promised you could 10x your productivity, but it's really about getting the sand out of the gears. So let me dive in with the presentation um, and we'll go from there. So what is the problem I'm trying to solve? If I just show you a bunch of stuff and you don't know like why I'm doing what I'm doing or what led me to this, it might be confusing and not very productive. So I'm really going to talk about the, you know, the, the problem, then how I've solved it. Um, and some of the concepts, I wanted to share the principles that led me to choose this solution. Then I'll show you specifically the tool um, that I use, Obsidian. Um, I want to share with you what I've learned about how ChatGPT actually functions, uh, because I think that's important. Um, when you know how things work, you can get a better use out of them. Uh, and finally, how I've integrated it into uh, Obsidian. So... Why do I do this? Well, it, a lot of it started 10 years ago when I joined the Entrepreneurs Organization. We do a lot of learning. Uh, there's always eight to 10 learning events every year. Um, I read a lot of books and listen to a lot of podcasts. Somebody asked me yesterday, like, how many books have you read? I'm like, well, my Kindle library has 550 books in it, but that doesn't include paper copies, audio books that I don't have, uh, Kindle versions of. It's a lot of stuff, right? But what are you doing with it? And so if you add up like all of the learning things, um, that's a lot. But also what's happened is work has become crazy complex. Yeah, I hear AI is wonderful and I see all the time it can save us, but it's leading some really complicated workflows, like lots of different applications that have to be stitched together. And it ends up being a mountain of information that I'm trying to keep track of. And my guiding light is this uh, quote from Maya Angelou, when I know better, I can do better. So my goal is to know better faster so I can do better sooner. Um, and that's how I think of productivity. Now, a lot of people use notes, note apps. You know, my Evernote became my junk drawer of ideas. So where did this start? Like years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, I got an Evernote. And I just throw everything into Evernote. And it turned into this. Like, I don't expect you to read that text, but that's one of my Evernote notebooks. And it was... There's business card scans in there next to a dwarf character sheet from D&D, next to my strength finders profile, next to like, it's just all like you would only search it because you'd never want to look in it. Um, and it got to the point, the more I used it, the more overwhelming it became and the less I wanted to actually refer to it. Um, that's the problem with most productivity systems I see is that they start great. And when you actually start loading your life into it, they become overwhelming and you stop using them. So this is the other thing that's happened is if you look at all the applications, like start actually thinking about all the software you use, it's crazy. And then throw in all the new AI apps, right? So I've got Monday for project management, or maybe you're on Asana. Maybe you have to use both because you're in different organizations and they both use them. Uh, maybe you're grabbing notes with Otter, AI, which sounds great, but you're producing PDFs and ChatGPT and uh, PowerPoint and uh, just, it's all of this stuff. What connects all that work together? It's your brain. Um, this is the pressure we're feeling. And part of the reason we feel this is we got this terrible teach from technology and it comes from the software developers. They want you to organize things by type. So Photo files go in the photo folder, uh, videos go in the video folder, spreadsheets go in the spreadsheet folder. You never organize anything like that in the rest of your life. That would be like taking a toothbrush, a hairbrush, and a toilet brush and putting them in the same place because they're brushes. That's ridiculous. But we do that with computer data and information all the time. We don't want to be organizing things by type anymore um, because you are the only thing that connects all this crap. And that ends up being a huge load. And you end up like this poor seagull um, where you're just covered in the oil and gook tied down. 
An abundance of information creates a scarcity of attention. So how can we free up our attention so we can think more and be more present in the present moment? Um, a good friend of mine, Ab Deweese, has this saying, who not how, very EO entrepreneurial. Like, I don't need to know how to do it. I need to find the person who knows how to do it. And so what I want to talk about is for personal knowledge management, you want to think where, not what. Where is that information stored so that I can be more productive? When we think about information, and if you're in marketing, you get this immediately. We have this sort of idealistic idea that we talk about a cup of coffee and it's just a word. Our brains are not list things. They're associative engines. And I say marketing because if you look at the picture of the cup of coffee, you pick up the beautiful girl and everything around it, the ambiance. That's what our brains do. We associate things. So I want a tool that works the way my brain does. Associates information, not just stores it. And when we try to make our brain act like a list engine, we fail. We always, we're always going to fail. We're not built for that. We're built to store all of the ancillary connections and richness of information. That's what we do. So hello, Obsidian. This is the tool I use. This is the tool I pick to help extend my brain. This is going to be my where. It's going to keep all of that detail for me. I just have to know where to find it. So why did I pick Obsidian? There's tons of note programs you could do that do similar things, but this has a couple of special features. One, it's connected. It stores bi-directional connections. Not only does it let you link from one note to another, it remembers the backlink. So you can follow links in any direction and that's really powerful. That's how our brains work. Two, all the information is stored on my hard drive in text files. It's always mine. I don't have to log in to access it. I could open it up with any text editor. I don't have to worry about, oh, recovering it or exporting it or then deleting something and then never getting it back. That just happened to a friend of mine. It's always mine. It's on my machine. Um, it's free. Great price. I do pay for a couple services. I pay for sync and publish. I'll talk about that later. But you can get started at no cost. And it runs on everything. It's on the Mac. It's on Windows. It's on iOS. It's on Android. It's on Linux. And every device I have has Obsidian running. So if I touch a productivity tool, I have access to my spare brain, my second brain. Um, I like that it uses Markdown, a very simple text formatting tool. There's a learning curve to it, but once you get used to it, it's crazy portable. I don't waste time reformatting documents with Markdown. I can just write or capture information and work with ideas. Um, and it's super customizable. There's a ton of things that you could turn your note base into a database. Um, you can integrate it with readwise.io. It's got graphing and drawing tools. I can create templates and macros and I can integrate ChatGPT into the tool, which is crazy powerful. So this is what my workflow is like now. I know where things are in Obsidian and Obsidian stores all of these connections. So tools like ChatGPT or emails I can pull into and store inside of Obsidian. And then when I need to save links to documents and files, I can save them in Obsidian. I'm saving the context of how I work. I call this organizing like a chef, mise en place, getting everything pulled together at your fingertips where you use it. So I'm saving my work context with Obsidian. And here's a, a visual when I say think like a chef. Um, the way I organize is in three main categories, and I use time. The problem with priorities is everything's a priority to somebody. Priorities are absolutely arbitrary, but time is hard. So if I'm trying to do it now and get it a specific outcome in a specific time, that's like eat it now. If you're going to make food now, where is it? It's on your countertop. It's on your stove. It's on your plate. It's in front of you. That's a project. You're trying to bring it to completion like right now. Soon is the refrigerator. Yeah, I'm going to eat it soon. If I don't eat it, it'll go bad. So there's sort of a clock clicking talk. But it's not like immediately that's what I'm eating. Then I have the pantry, stuff for the future. So I have projects, areas, and resources. I'm going to talk about the areas and resources that projects have a, a special relationship as well. Um, but if it's not one of those three, archive it. I'm not throwing it away, but I don't need to be looking at it and worrying about it. So I organize by the outcome I'm trying to achieve. And I use time as the great filter. 
Uh, Tiago Forte created this system. It's called Para. He has a couple excellent books out on it. One's the Para method. One is called Building the Second Brain. But here it is in a nutshell. I have four folders everywhere that I work. And it starts in Obsidian. It starts in my note base. I have a project folder for goal-oriented things I'm working on. I have an area folder for my roles. Um, it's like where my standards exist. Resources, things I'm curious about. That's my future. And if it's not now, sooner future, I'm done. Throw it in the archive. But my Google Drive is organized like that. My OneDrive is organized like that. And my note base is organized like that. I replicate this structure everywhere so I know where to look for things. Now, as entrepreneurs, one of the things we suffer from, and Andrea Hustis has talked about this, uh, Oliver Berkman and the Antidote has written about it, and you're beginning to see more information come out, the goals aren't the solution to everything. The promise of like, make a goal is like, well, yeah, but not for everything. Why? Well, we know goals are specific, right? Specific, measurable, actionable, uh, relevant, timely, they're smart, um, but they only trigger two key um, hormones, dopamine and cortisol. There's two other ones that are very important to our well-being and flourishing, serotonin and oxytocin. And so when we start thinking about things in our lives, there's some of them that don't respond well to being goal. There are things we don't want to end, and we put a lot of time and energy into them where we feel like we should be, and they're general, they're not specific, they're subjective, they're not objective, they're qualitative, not quantitative, they're boundless, they're not time bound, they're, you know, we don't want them to end, I don't want my health to end, I don't want my relationship with my wife or my kids to end, right? So there are things that I put energy into, there's no project or goal I could create that would stop me from having to take the trash out every week that I live in my home, because I have a standard to live in a clean home. So there's, if you start thinking into it, finances, health, relationships, um, maybe you're the CEO of the company, long-term areas you're gonna spend time and energy to get good outcomes or maintain standards. Um, they deserve every bit as much priority and energy as any of the goals we work on. And so this system allows me to keep those things in balance. So here's my workflow. This is how this, works in practice for me is that I have a daily practice of capturing information into a daily note. When I have some free time, I often organize or distribute that information into its correct area by time. And then later when I'm doing productive work, that's when I, all my resources are here. I can begin pulling information, integrating information from GITP or resources that I've accumulated over time to create packets of work that I then export to other tools. So that, where do you store those prompts you give ChatGPT or MidJourney? Where do you keep all that stitching together? That happens in this document. It happens in my note base. And what I want to do is show you what's possible. So I'm gonna switch over to um, giving you a, a look at um, a, I'm gonna pick a more advanced, like this is a real live um, example of my note base with uh, my daily note in it. Um, this is what I use uh, every day. Um, I get a new note that opens in my daily notes. But if I pop open my projects per se, one of the advantages I get of this over Evernote is it immediately reinforces what's important to me. It's immediately a list of the projects that I think are important that I am spending time on. Um, the same thing with my areas. I go through and where am I spending time and energy? Where do I have a role that I want to make sure is balanced? Because there's just certain information that you end up with that you want to hold on to um, that isn't necessarily a goal. Um, that goes into my areas. So simply using the tool immediately gives me feedback on where I'm spending my time and energy and I find that valuable. Resources, these are all the things that I'm interested in, sort of Richard Feynman's 12 interesting questions. Uh, like I've got resources on um, RPG, role-playing games, um, one bag travel, I find is like, how can I be more efficient and travel lighter? Things that I learn get stored here. Um, there's some very, very powerful tools. This is a built out, fully functional note system. Like this is where everything starts for me. 
and there's some advanced features in here and I'm showing this to show you what's possible not that you have to start here or that you have to build this but one of the things that's powerful is I have an integration with Readwise um, and with Readwise um, I have this workflow if I buy a book I get the Kindle, I get the audio, I download the audio into the Kindle app, and then I play it. And so I listen off the Kindle app. Then when the author says something really interesting, I pause, highlight that section, and bang, that information is automatically exported with links back to its original source into my note base. So I have access to all the highlights from all the books that I have read over the years. And so this becomes a crazy valuable resource for me when I'm writing or creating content or putting together speeches. Like this is an amazing thing for me. Another powerful uh, tool that is available is here's a project that's nearly finished, um, a, a series of articles I wrote for a newsletter, and I can use a canvas to lay them out visually so I can see the status of each of the articles as they move their way through being submitted, through being published, um, and I can keep track of it visually and keep them all connected. And then I can click on any individual article, um, and let me get that right, and jump straight to that article where it's written. So it can tie together things that are visual for me. Uh, another tool that comes from a plugin that is crazy powerful is this idea of uh, Excaladraw. Um, integrated into my notes. So I have this super powerful drawing package that allows me to create images or export ideas um, and share them with uh, either other notes or other people. And that is, uh, you know, for me, I'm a big visual person. So having this sort of whiteboard tool integrated, crazy powerful. Um, there's tons and tons of other plugins and notes and things you can do. Um, maybe one of the, the most important ones for me is this travel index. Um, it will go search out every single uh, trip um, that I have coming up from wherever it's located, personal trip, business trip, project trip, whatever, and give them to me in a list. Um, and I have a template that I've created that allows me to track all of those details because I'm terrible at remembering on my own. And the information comes at you from a dozen different platforms. Somebody could slack me the agenda for a meeting I'm going to. I could get uh, information from WhatsApp, from a travel agent. I could get emails from the airlines. Um, how, what's my transportation going to be? Uh, what project files do I need to make sure that I bring? What's my packing list? This lets me pull all of those information together. Like somebody could mail you in the mail, physically a badge. That happens. I got to remember to get that thing. Um, so this becomes a tool I use to not to know where to put things. And what I love about it is the more I use it, the more useful it gets. So don't be overwhelmed by that. This is an example of a uh, fully functional uh, knowledge base. Um, what we're gonna look at is this, a starter, like what does it start like and how does it work? Um, and I wanna touch on something because I've talked about projects. Like how is this different than say, um, monday.com. Um, I don't have the enterprise version of Monday, so I can't do uh, private boards in Monday. And Monday is super powerful. I know a lot of great tools about it, but I use it for work. It, this tool is my personal productivity tool. So I save links to my Monday boards inside my personal project files. And so when I'm doing a project for work, we set up Monday. Uh, there's stuff I need to remember and keep. I basically, with that connector information, Monday's part of it. So I have my big project file. I have a template I've created for all of my projects um, that allow me to, uh, when I'm looking at a project, um, remember what that plan is. What am I gonna do? Why am I gonna do it? Uh, mine's actually more detailed as you can imagine. But you could, whatever is important to you, like what does done look like? Uh, what are your three most important steps? Uh, what are the milestones? What tools and software and folders, like all of that information you normally carry around in my head goes into that file for me. So I use Monday, but I don't use Monday for this. This is about offloading all that detail for me 
so I know where to look to get it. I don't have to remember what it is. I just need to remember where it's at. Um, now let's take a look at, um, we're gonna dive in and take a look at ChatGPT. And so what I wanna share with you is what um, ChatGPT is doing. And I've gotta find, there it is, Playground. Okay, so if you have a subscription to ChatGPT, you have access to this. You might not actually need a subscription. This is their playground. And what this thing is doing is, uh, I'm gonna clear this out, start over. You wanna make sure you select completion mode, not chat mode. And two at the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to pick full spectrum. Um, we're gonna pick a temperature of one to start. These are the default, actually, 0.7 is the typical default. And what I wanna point out to you is, we're gonna put in this question, what are Brandon Sanderson's three laws of magic? I'm gonna ask it. Now, you're getting this color-coded bunch of text. If you click on a word, it's gonna tell you what words it could have started with and which word it picked. It picked the, the highest probability word. The next word in the chain goes, well, law, was next. Then he has hard. Now it could have been conserve, conservation was actually a higher probability. It picked the second one. It could have picked any of these. But what you're seeing it do is ChatGPT is actually doing what we do. Most people have no idea what word they're going to say next until it comes out of their mouth. In fact, one of my favorite quotes I read recently, Arthur Brooks uh, uh, related, was, "How do I know?" what I think um, until I hear what I say. Many times, um, uh, a great book was uh, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me. They talk about this idea of um, people don't know what they think until they talk. Motivational interviewing has the same concept. We need to talk out our thoughts to get clear about them. This is one of the reasons journaling is so powerful. It's a form of practice thinking. This is why we teach kids to write essays in schools. There's a psychological principle that language is indistinguishable from thought. They're highly related. And so we speak and write to discover what we think and sharpen our thinking. So journaling, writing are all ways of sharpening your own thinking. So what's ChatGPT doing? It is pulling from the entire internet library of human thought. They're not just words. They're coherent words. They're words put together in an order that makes sense. And so it is statistically pulling out of that library to go, well, what would most likely be said next? Really similar to what we're doing. Is it thinking? You could argue that it is, but I feel it's more mining our thinking and reflecting it back to us. This tool, playing with this, will give you an understanding about um, how to play with these variables like frequency penalty. I don't want the words repeated uh, more than a few times. I want it to be more creative. And if you hover over the labels, it'll tell you what they are. So we can delete this, hit submit, and notice it regenerated the text differently. This is not the same text that we saw before and you're getting different probabilities. And this is really illustrative. See how it has sand or sun? That's a token. Is like if the first word is sand, the next most likely token in this context is going to be ursons. And so that was 99.99% of what you were going to see next. So this illustrates why, here's another one, consistent is a token, a fraction of a word. So it's not thinking in whole words. Um, it is literally probably you know, doing statistical probability on what comes next. But because it's mining thought, our thoughts captured in words, it feels really like super smart and super intelligent and magical. But that's what it's doing. And the reason I point this tool out is it makes it a little easier to see what's happening because when we come back into... Um, the obsidian window, uh, not that obsidian, we want the other obsidian. Um, 
we're going to be able to see getting this right. Um, those variables are going to show up again and they're going to give us the opportunity to create different types of, of chat. So let me go back to um, the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, quick summary. Remember, this is for my personal productivity. When I start a project, I have a template that I've created and I just fill it in and it, it creates that home for me to remember lots of information. If it's a role that I'm involved in, similar idea. I have this home note idea that this is the information I'm going to use um, to be more productive. We just looked at what ChatGPT does. Now, how do you start? How do you begin this? Um, I The way I start and what I'm recommending is download ChatGPT um, for free. Um, you can install it on your desktop um, and play around with it. Make four folders, projects, areas, resources, and archives. You can create an attachments folder. I have a YouTube video on all of this that'll walk you through it. Um, and create your daily notes and get your daily notes up and running. I'm not going to dive into that right now because that's a whole other uh, area that, uh, again, I have a YouTube video on it. But the power of the daily note is um, I can set up my checklist, my, my routine, but this is that home note. Like this is where during the day I just dump stuff till I know what to do with it. Um, I get templates running. So I have a template for my daily note. I have a template for my project plans, things, personal process documents, things I want to use over and over again. And I want to learn from my past mistakes. Um, if you've ever read the checklist manifesto by Atul Gawande, these are personal checklists, things I'm reusing so that I don't have to think so hard. And it can remind me of information I need to gather, um, including like a travel template and all the information that I typically want to make sure I fill in. So on the day of travel, I have everything I need and I'm ready to go. Now, let's talk about ChatGPT. A lot of this is done with plugins. There's a little gear down here, you fire it up, and through the community plugins, you can browse hundreds of plugins to customize your note base, your vault. These are called vaults. Um, data view is the one that lets me pull data reports like what, show me the list of all my travel documents. Uh, calendar makes the daily note much more useful. Um, but the one that is kind of fun is the chat GPT um, MD. On this particular note base, I've already installed it. Um, and what it lets me do that is crazy powerful is um, when I have these chats set up, I can create templates. So a template looks like this. It's got a prompt I'm gonna send through as a default. And then look at these variables, temperature, top P, uh, set a max token limit, presence, frequency, the same variables we saw in the playground. I can even pick which model I wanna work with. And what that allows me to do is I can create a new chat from a template Let's create Spanish Tutor. And so in the Spanish Tutor, um, I now have the ability to get, oh, uh, please translate this block of text. So I'm gonna go grab um, from one of my areas is I'm learning Spanish. I want to translate this block of text from the Daily Stoic. Came out of one of my insights um, and I want them to translate it uh, into English and explain the grammar behind the translation. Okay. And what happens is I can now do a chat, stream the chat. And there it goes. Just like in ChatGPT, it is translating it, but it's also explaining it. And so I can have a conversation with ChatGPT all of this context, context is being transmitted back and forth. Um, so it's a lot like the chat window, but inside my note base. And so I could literally take this note and I can move this note um, to uh, that area where I said, oh, I'm learning Spanish. So let's say Spanish. Oh, there it is. And boom, it's now part of my Spanish note area in learning. 
and I can continue to work back and forth and ask questions with the system. And so what I get out of this is now I have, um, I, I actually, in my note base, I have like half a dozen of these. Let's say I took my blog, loaded it in and said, create a prompt for my writing style off of this content. And so it, it characterized my writing. I created a template, so if I need to create a note really fast or a blog post really quick, I can go in and say, generate this thing. And it'll be like, gotcha. So using templates makes it much faster for me. Um, the fact that it's integrated into my note base, to me, is just easier to remember than, oh yeah, ChatGPT saved all my chats, but they're not organized in any particular way. Um, you gotta search through them. You gotta remember what it is. This system makes it so much easier for me to lay my hands on what I need to know and when I need to know it. Um, the How do you start? Like, how do you get out of Evernote? How do you get out of OneNote? Um, there's a couple of processes that you can follow. Um, and the one I recommend that has been game, it was game changing for me, um, and I've helped three or four other people do this, and I've gotten the same feedback if you're brave enough to try it. So number one, start with your files. Make a folder called archive and today's date and drag everything into that folder. Then drag that folder into your four archives folder. So I have one projects, two areas, three resources, four archives. And I take all this stuff and put it away. Then as I need it, when I remember what I need, I go into that folder and I pull it out and move it into the correct project, area, or resource. I move two to three percent of the stuff. It's amazing how much stuff we hold on to that we don't actually need. And it clutters up our view. It clutters up our thinking. It increases that cognitive load. It gums us up. Um, and so what we want to do is get it out of the way. You can do the exact same thing with your transplanting from your notes. One way I did it is I exported a ton of stuff out of uh, my Evernote, and then I put it all in my archive folder. Uh, that, a classic example is I used Bear Notes for a while, which is only on Mac. I'm on a Windows machine now. So what did I do? Exported all that stuff and then put it in the archive of my, of my vault. And then as I needed a note, I would go into the archive and find it and pull it out and put it where it belonged. And um, differently, Notion makes it almost impossible to export your notes. It's really tedious and a pain. So I ran Notion side by side with Obsidian for a while, pulling over notes as I needed them. Um, and then it, after about six weeks, I didn't need to do that anymore. And now I'm to the point that maybe once or twice a year, if that, there's some obscure thing from the past I gotta go find, and it's in Notion, um, and, and I'll pull it out. But there's two strategies, either export it all and then dump it in the archive or run them side by side, but it's really the same strategy. Compartmentalize it and only pull over what you need. Start with a clean slate. Do not, please do not, number one, store any passwords in Obsidian. It's not for that. But two is don't go look at every note and try to figure out what to do with it. That's like why a moving company can move you in a day and you can't clean your office in three weeks. Because you start touching things and all that association. Like, oh, I remember about that. I was, I was going to do this. And then... You're not filing, you're sentimenting, you're remembering, you're not being productive. So the easy thing to do is bundle it all up, get it out of sight, and then only retrieve what you remember and know you need. And what you'll find is that you're gonna pull a tiny fraction of what you're holding on to. And you're gonna pull it into a system that gets more useful the more you use it, which is the way that chefs work. The whole philosophy of mise en place is that you're trying to keep everything at your fingertips. And what chefs do that's amazing that I'm trying to do as an entrepreneur is I want to produce high quality work in copious amounts and I'm always under pressure, right? Time to market matters, like there's always competition. And I want to do this every day. So for me, I want my maximum brain capacity to be focused on the problem at hand. And that's another thing that I didn't really talk about. One other terrible teach that we got was from school that you could sit down and focus for hours on end 
Are you kidding me? There's no way I could get four uninterrupted hours as a business owner to focus on solving a problem. I need work to fit the way I work. I've got to fit it into the time slices. That's why I use this context situation. That's why what I'm really doing uh, with this system is Obsidian preserves the context of my work so I can walk away and come back. Think about an artist in a studio. They get all their paints out, they get their canvas set up, and they work on it over time. When they walk away, all of that stuff is still there. They don't put it all away. Leonardo da Vinci didn't go, eh, you know, uh, roll David and stick it in a closet till I need it again. The studio was set up on that big project. And if they were going to work multiple projects, they set up multiple work areas. That's this idea of like, I can have an infinite number of kitchens, an infinite number of little art studios with Obsidian because it's preserving all the tools. And so I can step in and step out quickly. And it allows work to fit my schedule instead of me monkeying my schedule around trying to make it fit this outdated idea of school that, oh yeah, I'll figure that out someday. Um, at the end of the day, the, these principles, you don't have to use Obsidian. It's the tool I use. I've explained why I use it. But my kid, uh, one of them does use Notion. Uh, another one, uh, two other ones are like, they're onto Obsidian. Um, you know, find a tool that works for you. Uh, I do recommend this platform and why. There's two things I do pay for. The sync, I mentioned, because it keeps everything current everywhere. I know some people that use iCloud. I don't like iCloud because I don't know when it's gonna update um, and it's sporadic. Uh, Obsidian Sync is just push, magic, things are updated virtually in real time. It's fantastic, so it gives me cloud backups of files I have on my hard drive. Um, and then I use Publish, so I can take segments of my notes and share them with people. When I was a accelerator coach, I would talk about different management tools. People, oh, can you share that with me? I'm like, sure. Here it is in my note base, publish it, and send them a link, and they have access to my information um, from what I've learned. So I found it super valuable. Um, so here's the biggest takeaways. I said two, and then I put four things on the list. Um, you want to think like that chef or the artist. Set up your work environment so that everything's at your fingertips. And that's what a good note base does, is it allows it to carry the load. Think what, you know, uh, think where, not what. Where's that information? It's an obsidian. I know where to look for it. And once I'm there, it has all the tendrils that connect all of these disparate things together. Um, balance your roles and your goals. Uh, elevating roles to an equal footing with goals has been life-changing for me. It has led to dramatic improvements in relationships and things I really care about. Um, and I have a trusted space to save my work context. It's back to that chef thing. Is Obsidian's my vault. It's where I know I'm gonna be able to find information. And if you're trying to transition, I recommend make the bold leap, go for the clean start. Take your old stuff, compartmentalize it so you don't have to look at it every day, create the new structure, and pull across as needed. And you'll be shocked how little you need. But you're never losing anything. You're never throwing anything away, right? It's always still there. Just start working in a clean environment in the new format. And what I hope will happen for you is happen for other people is you become more productive right away. Um, some of the books uh, that are the foundations of this, Building a Second Brain, Mind for Numbers, uh, the Organizing My Time for Mastery Now and How to Take Smart Notes. Um, that's all you know, my resources um, and the tools I talked about, like what plugins and my shared notes uh, on publish.obsidian.md slash Scott Novus. Uh, also, if you go to my blog, scottnovus.com, and my YouTube, I have videos that walk you through how to set up uh, an Obsidian note base and how to plug in um, the uh, ChatGPT plugins. But uh, reach out to me, connect with me. I'm happy to share any data, any question. You know, um, I'm very passionate about helping people be more successful. Uh, um, and for whatever reason, this is a topic that uh, has really resonated with people, especially I think with the explosion of AI. It's saving those intermediate work packets, is making sure you understand the whole process and you know, lighten the cognitive load. Like you're stitching all this stuff together, get a tool to help you do it for you. 
uh, is what has really led to my leaps in productivity. Um, and I hope you have the same experience. Thanks for listening.